Welcome back to the channel. This video is on oceanography and in detail we're looking at the chemical makeup of the oceans, in particular looking at the saline, the salty nature of the oceans, the where it derives from, the amount of salt and what salts are in the overall term saline or salty ocean water. This is the Earth Science Classroom. So there's roughly 330 million cubic miles of water on Earth, on average, and we know that the Earth is mostly ocean on the surface. So there's bedrock and there's ocean floor, continents, but there's 71% oceans on the surface. And of that mostly ocean on the surface, about 97% of that water on the earth which includes all of the terrestrial water groundwater stored water in ice and glaciers and ice caps about 97 percent is water that is salty or we call oceans now there is a fluctuation in the amount of salt in the oceans and around the coastlines and in a lot of the rivers and streams however the majority of the salt is in the oceans and that is the majority of the water of that 330 million cubic miles that's on this planet and so to investigate chemical oceanography you have to look at the ocean water and look at the composition chemically of that water and what is in the water so first obviously water is h2o and it is a polar molecule and it's special with various characteristics and properties that make it very awesome to have on this planet and very useful to have on this planet not only to drink and to use but chemically and physically it is a awesome molecule and what goes into that water that can be dissolved into that water makes it unique and can create this salty or saline water so the ions the dissolved ions that can go into the water and be dissolved are such as chloride which is pretty much a little bit over half about 55 percent of all the ions in water ocean water are going to be chloride then you got this sodium around 30 percent magnesium around three and a half percent sulfate about seven and a half percent seven and three quarters calcium makes up about 1.2 percent and then you've got potassium about one percent and then you've got about 0.2 on average trace components so smaller ions that are dissolved inside the ocean water and this all culminates in mostly sodium chloride around 85 or 86 percent of the ions in the seawater that make up the saltiness is going to be basically table salt sodium chloride and these two chloride and sodium are the longest residing ions in the ocean so they take the longest to circulate before they are removed for any reason now the majority of the ions they come from the weathering and erosion both chemically and mechanically or physically of the terrestrial rocks the rocks on the continents islands and even the ocean floor and even the formation of these continents and islands through volcanic or volcanism activity the breakdown of the rocks through the elements, through climate, weather and wind, temperature, various processes, it's going to break down the rocks and then be transported by water, by the fluvial systems on land, back to the oceans, down towards a lower elevation, which is sea level. And that is how the ions are going to be transported to the oceans, therefore circulated and then dissolved within the ocean itself creating a level of saltiness that the oceans possess which is different to the freshwater sources on land like rivers and streams and ponds and groundwater now the freshwater ocean water or salt water can differ slightly but freshwater is around 0.5 percent salt versus the average ocean salinity or amount of salt is around three 
to three and a half. Now this does vary based on location, based on characteristics of the water, latitude and climate, but the average is around three and a half percent. For example, the Atlantic ranges from 3.3 to 3.8 percent, Pacific 3.2, 3.7, Arctic is a little bit less of 3 to 3.4, the Indian roughly the same as Pacific 3.2, 3.7 and the southern ocean around Antarctica is around 3.4 now these can vary but these are the averages now anything over 0.5 to 3 is called brackish water that's the combination of fresh and salt water mixing around estuaries coastlines and shorelines we have the inflow of the river meeting the oceans then you get brine which is any salty water over five percent and this can be created through a closed basin of water with high evaporation rates and leaving the increasing amounts of salt left in the water because when you evaporate water the water vapor does not contain much if any salt so the majority of the salts are left in the liquid water and the evaporated water vapor which is now gas is going to rise up within the atmosphere and not contain much if not any of the salt so the more evaporation you get the more saltier the ocean below and this can be in small amounts but it's still going to increase in salinity also if you have high levels of precip or high levels of an influx of river water like on the amazon or the nile or the mississippi or these large rivers you're going to get an influx of fresh water and this would then decrease salinity as a average around those areas so again salinity is the percentage of dissolved ions within the water and this can fluctuate throughout the oceans throughout ocean basins and different geographic locations and fluctuate based on different parameters and characteristics like evaporation precipitation and the influx of river water thank you so much for watching the video i hope you enjoyed it if you like it please subscribe and hit the like button and if you like more on this content please check out my channel which has all these videos on earth science